Hello everyone, Nancy here and welcome to Hollywood Corner. In today's video we will be discovering the saddest and most emotional moments in Stranger Things. It's no secret that Stranger Things leaves its viewers in emotional turmoil. Having recently been nominated for 13 Emmys, season 4 was quite the roller coaster. Personally, not a single breath was taken whilst watching the two hour and a half finale. Scared and saddened doesn't even begin to explain it. So, in honor of the absolute train wreck that season 4 left us in, we've taken it upon ourselves to reflect on the show as a whole and bring you a rundown of the saddest Stranger Things moments across all four seasons. Got tissues at the ready? Let's begin. Will's fake body is pulled from the lake. This was devastating. Even though we mostly knew that the body wasn't actually that of Will's, it's still heartbreaking to watch the town and our characters react to this tragedy. Mike's reaction and lashing out at Eleven is so sad to see, when paired with the background score. The parallels between Joyce hugging Jonathan and Karen hugging Mike is peak cinematography. Flashbacks of Hopper's daughter's death. Another sad moment in season 1 was when Hopper finds Will in the upside down, weakened and on the brink of death. When he resuscitates Will, he starts to have flashbacks of his own daughter Sarah's death. Once again, the parallel between the two scenes is heartbreaking but reveals so much about Hopper's backstory. Eleven disappears and goodbyes Mike. In the finale of season 1, we're treated to an amazing scene with Eleven revealing just how powerful she is when she fights the Demo Gorgon. That's been terrorizing her friends and their town. However, it's also terrifying sad because she disappears and goes into the upside down too, but not before turning and whispering goodbye Mike as she leaves. Meeting Barb's parents. Recovering from the disappearance of their daughter, Barb's parents cling on to the hope that she is still out there somewhere alive and well. Unfortunately, this is not the case. Barb is gone and Nancy is haunted by that fact every day. In season 2 we deal with the aftermath of the events that occurred in season 1. But this one is particularly haunting because Nancy can't even offer them closure. Bob's death. The superhero decided to sacrifice himself for Joyce and her son to get out of the lab crowded with demo dogs. I remember exactly how horrified I was when he mistakenly dropped that stick and I was praying he makes it out of that place safely. Unfortunately, he got killed and eaten by the demo dogs after nearly reaching Joyce and safety, which brought Joyce and everybody to tears. Eleven learns about her mother. Whilst Eleven's family history was touched upon last season, it's here that we really delve deep into her past. She uses her powers to find her mother, but is left scared and confused. She's screaming mama again and again but to no avail. Even when it's later revealed that she was separated from her mother at birth by Dr. Brenner. We're all heartbroken for poor little Elle. Dustin gets rejected at the snowball. Who could ever refuse our adorable little Dustin? Apparently, some mean girls at school feel the need to rudely reject Dustin's proposal for a dance at the snowball. When he's left crying quietly in the corner of the school hall, it's something that's so sad to watch. The feeling of rejection is one we've all experienced in various ways and it's a feeling we all hope never to experience again. The look on Dustin's face after continuously being shot down was heartbreaking. Even after everything they've been through, the fact remains that this group is still just innocent kids. However, it does get better when Nancy approaches him and offers him a dance. It's very cute and emotional. Will destroys Castle Byers. We're on to season 3 now, where there definitely isn't a shortage of seriously sad moments. One especially devastating scene is when Will gets upset at his friends, especially Mike, and tears down Castle Byers. It's sad because this was his safe space, but as his friends have moved on without him, he's destroying the last few bits of childhood and innocence that he has left. Ouch. Alexei's death. Season 3 introduced us to a few new characters in the Stranger Things universe, Robin Buckley, for example. But one sticks out in fans' minds that we will not soon forget is Alexei. He was a recurring character throughout the show's third season, one that fans quickly grew to love. Making his death even more heartbreaking was that he just won a giant stuffed Woody Woodpecker at the Hawkins July 4th Fun Fair, had enjoyed his cherry Slurpee, and was having a fantastic time at the fair. His childlike mannerisms and innocence created a long-lasting soft spot for this character. So when that innocence was ripped away, it was heartbreaking to see his story come to such a cruel end. Billy's past revealed. This season was heart-wrenching for Billy. Whilst disliked initially, Billy's character arch was something spectacular. But what was truly saddening was to learn all about his childhood trauma and past, after that, he also quickly became a fan favorite, but the Duffer brothers really seemed to love killing off fan favorites. 
So, when Eleven finds out that Billy is only the bully he is now because his mother left him with his abusive father, it's definitely a tear-jerking moment. The buyers move away. The ending of season 3 was also just devastating. Everyone remembers sitting there, too stunned to speak, as we realized that Will and Jonathan and Joyce and Elle were leaving. Despite knowing that they're only fictional characters, we couldn't help but feel as though we were actually watching our best friends move away and leave the town we had grown up in. Hopper's letter to Elle, we were already hanging on to a very thin thread of sanity at the end of this season. So when Hopper's letter was playing in the background as Eleven sobbed and hugged her friends goodbye, we were a mess. The three inches and the fact that she thought her dad was gone? If the thought of losing Hopper wasn't enough to break your heart, his letter to Eleven was undoubtedly enough to shatter it completely. The look on Eleven's face as she scans the people around, unable to find him was tough to watch without shedding a tear. But when she clocked eyes with a crying Joyce and realized what had seemingly happened, she broke down. And we were right there crying alongside them both. So painful to watch. It doesn't get easier on the rewatch either. Hopper is free for the first time. We didn't realize we'd get so choked up at a man dipping his grubby hands into peanut butter and licking it off his fingers in a Russian church. But here we are. There's something so tragic and moving about the simplicity of it all. Having spent such a long time in a prison camp, I guess it's the little things that bring tears to our eyes. Hopper reunites with Joyce. But when Hopper sees Joyce again for the first time in eight months, everything comes flooding back. After eight months of relentless torture and suffering, it's genuinely so sad to see the condition that Hopper is in now. It's their long-awaited hug that packs such a powerful punch. Max prepares for Vecna's curse. Poor Max. She carried this season on her back and she paid for it. When she found out that she was next in line for Vecna's teenage killing sprees, she wrote letters and made plans for her death. The whole of that episode was just so sad. And we're guessing those letters will come back in season 5 and rip our hearts out all over again. Eddie's death. With less than a month to process the ending of season 4, we're still reeling from the chaos and heartbreak that ensued from volume 2's events. The fourth season had many downright crushing moments, but perhaps the saddest came at the loss of two beloved characters, Max and Eddie. While Eleven brought Max back, she remained in a coma. Eddie wasn't so lucky. Many TV show character deaths use their final moments to inspire some lasting words of wisdom for those left behind. Eddie had become an incredibly loved part of the Stranger Things family, with many fans relating to him as a person and him simply being an undeniably lovable member of the show. Eddie's death came as a devastating blow. Between his final words to Dustin and the latter's breakdown while cradling his dying friend, we were a mess and in utter denial by the end of this finale. I didn't run away this time. Excuse us while we cry again. I don't want to die. I'm not ready and Erica, help, we've saved the best for last. This moment quite literally ripped our heart out and snapped our bones Chrissy style. The fact that Max was ready to face Vecna but lost and ended up begging for her life was incredibly painful to watch. Sadie Sink and Caleb McLaughlin are such a great acting duo. When Lucas delivered that heart-wrenching, improvised line, Erica, help, we lost all sense of hope. Admit it, we're still not over it to be honest, and I don't think we ever will be. They both deserve better and everyone is still mad at Jason. That's all for today's video, I hope you guys enjoyed today's discovery. Hit that like and subscribe button to always keep yourself notified for other videos. See you soon.